Welcome back, everyone. The authors of the Quran decided to recreate biblical history in their own image. This process of Islamization entails leaving aside anything that the Quran's authors were ignorant of or anything that disagrees with Islamic theology. Also, the same process rather strangely entails including a bunch of later legendary material that no historians consider remotely trustworthy. Add in some all too predictable tropes about the messengers and prophets, and that's how the Quran misconstrues its biblical history and characters. Check the link in the description box where I give you numerous examples of this. Now, all this could hardly be more true with the Quranic Jesus than anyone else due to his numerous mentions in the Quran, far more than, say, Muhammad, who barely gets mentioned at all, leaving it up to Muslim translators to bracket his name into the Quran dozens of times. But the Jesus of the Quran, prominent as he may be, is simply a fictional construct. He's molded in the theology of the Quran, and that's about it. This means that the person and work of Jesus is lost and distorted, as is the context in which he lived and breathed, the Hebrew scriptures and first century Judaism. While much could be said about the Quran mangling its portrait of Jesus, in this video I wanted to focus on one major theological theme that runs throughout the Bible, centering on Jesus, but completely absent in the Quran. This is one of many examples of the latter's disconnect from the books it claims to affirm. One problem with the disease of leprosy for the ancient Israelites was that it made them ritually unclean. Leviticus 13 describes how a leper was brought to the priest to be pronounced unclean after examination. This person would then have to be isolated from the community to contain the disease. The next chapter describes the process for lepers who were healed. Again, the priest is the one who examines the person and guides the former leper through an offering process, after which they are cleansed and able to return to the community. Tracing the priestly theme through the New Testament, many viewers will probably be familiar with how the book of Hebrews describes Jesus as the great high priest. However, many interpreters have noticed lots of places where priestly descriptions of Jesus occur in the Gospels. While a book like Hebrews frequently teaches us theology through propositional statements, the Gospels are narrative, and so in many cases they show us who Jesus is. So let's look at the Gospel of Mark and see how he shows us Jesus is a priest like none other. This theme begins very early in Mark in chapter 1. Here are verses 23 and 24. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Recall that in Mark's Gospel especially, he stresses that Jesus' followers are very slow to recognize him for who he is, but the demons know it immediately. So this unclean spirit calls Jesus the Holy One of God. Now this is a theologically loaded phrase because it sounds, well, a little priestly. Psalm 106 uses a very similar phrase referring to Aaron, calling him the Holy One of the Lord. Ultimately, this comes from the description of the priest's clothing back in Exodus 28. On his forehead, the priest wore a golden plate that said, A holy object for Yahweh. So back to Mark's gospel, if the functions of a priest included both cleansing person and sanctuary, and Jesus is a priest like no other, then the last thing you want to be is an unclean spirit in the synagogue, standing before Jesus the priest, awaiting your destruction. The unclean spirit fears the one who can make clean. And throughout his first chapter, Mark emphasizes that Jesus did just that. He healed many, cast out demons, and became very popular, so much so that everyone was looking for him. But popularity isn't the point. We know from the Gospels that crowds could follow Jesus for many reasons. We all know of famous people today, but we know of these people without having any sort of relationship with them. So, Mark zooms in for another perspective, as he gives us the scene of a man, a leper, who's having a personal encounter with Jesus. And this is where it's helpful to have that Leviticus background from earlier. And a leper came to him, imploring him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. This man is part of a milieu where he must go to a more conventional priest before he's let back into society, and naturally Jesus accommodates that. But it's only a formality. Jesus actually makes the leper clean. The leper will show himself to the priest, but only as proof, not pending the priest's examination. Jesus already made the pronouncement, be clean. Perhaps most strikingly, Jesus touched the leper. This should have also rendered Jesus unclean. However, this strange new priest, Jesus, seems to be above purity laws. 
So this is a frequent theme in the Gospels, where Jesus does something that's familiar. It has theological continuity and categories in the Hebrew Bible, but at the same time, he goes far beyond anything that preceded him. So in the same chapter of Mark's Gospel, the crowds are amazed at Jesus' teaching because he taught with authority, unlike the scribes. As we've already seen, he has power over unclean spirits, power he even shared with his disciples in chapter 6. In chapter 2, closer to our immediate context, he has the authority on earth to forgive sins, something closely associated with the function of a priest in the Torah. So Mark's gospel makes it clear that Jesus does things familiar to the theological categories of the Hebrew Bible, but advances them in astonishing ways. Jesus' priestly acts are certainly a prime example. And these things that Jesus did made him famous. Even much later in times and places far removed from Jesus' life, written and oral tradition continued to be produced, circulated, and embellished. So, how do you make Jesus even more extraordinary in those legends? Well, maybe he performed completely pointless miracles like talking as a baby or making clay birds fly, things that we see, of course, in the Quran, which has absolutely no theological anchor, continuity, or context for anything Jesus does. Thus the Quran says, Remember when God said, Jesus, son of Mary, remember my blessing on you and your mother, when I supported you with the Holy Spirit and you spoke to the people while you were still in the cradle and in adulthood. Not sure why it's necessary to add that part. And when I taught you the book and the wisdom and the Torah and the gospel, and when you created the form of a bird from clay by my permission, and you breathed into it, and it became a bird by my permission, and you healed the blind and the leper by my permission, and when you brought forth the dead by my permission, and when I restrained the sons of Israel from violence against you, when you brought them the clear signs, those among them who had disbelieved said, this is nothing but clear magic. So the Quran takes material from much later sources that aren't recognized by anyone as being remotely historically reliable, with no theological underpinnings, and lists them along with the healing of a leper, which, as we've seen, has deep theological implications. Then it casts them all under the broad rubric of the Quran's signs, which are performed by many of the Quran's other cardboard cutout messengers. It's also important to note that the Quran treats these strictly as sign acts. That's wrong. Jesus doesn't simply perform the sign of healing a leper. He is, in his person, performing the role of priest like none other. The act says something about his identity. That's the point. The Quran also mentions Jesus healing the blind. Notice again, casting Jesus' actions as purely signs. And again, this is wrong. From Luke 4, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to Jesus. He unrolled it and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. It's not just that Jesus healed the blind. It's that Jesus was identifying himself as the messenger of Isaiah. It's not just the sign. It's his identity. The Quran doesn't tell you about Jesus' person, his identity. It does give you quite a pathetic and discriminant mixture of garbled first century sources and, of course, much later legends, not regarded as historical by anyone, anywhere, ever, except for Muslims centuries after the fact because of their theological priors. In short, the Quran gives you the crowd's perspective in Mark chapter 1. It tells you about the public signs that Jesus did, but says nothing of his person and the way he continued and advanced the theology of the Hebrew Bible. It gives you surface-level stuff with no substance. However, there's another perspective in Mark chapter 1. Jesus is more than just a public miracle worker followed by the masses. There's a scene of a leper who approaches Jesus personally and begs him to act like a priest. If you will, you can make me clean, the leper said. That scene perfectly depicts the gospel message. Jesus' miracles tell us about his identity, and that's what the Quran doesn't know or doesn't want you to know about Jesus. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.